And we now turn our attention to the Mustangs of SMU and their head coach, Matt Doherty, joins us right now. A very successful campaign last year, finishing with a record of 20 and 15, 8 and 8 in conference play, but they also lost in the semifinals in the CIT tournament. First postseason bid for uh, SMU in 11 years. When you look back at that experience, all coaches probably cross their fingers and say, oh, I hope it carries over. I hope it carries over. Do you think it will? Well, I think it's carried over uh, just in terms of the feeling. Uh, the, the, kids, the kids and and the fans need to be rewarded. And I thought that uh, uh, it really brought our basketball community together. And I think it helped recruiting. Um, and you get to a number and you could say, hey, we won 20 games. Um, and that number still resonates with people. So, um, you know, we have nine new faces right now. Uh, eight will play. And so uh, we lost six players from last year. Only two of our players have had significant playing time, Robert Nakunde and Jeremiah Samaripas. And, I know you've been practicing that San Rippus name I'll for wait. a while. <laughs> I'll wait till basketball season. They'll start working on it. Uh, he's not Greek, but no, okay. uh, he. Uh, but so we have talent. I like our talent, but it's an experienced talent. But you had four guys who were at the team last year but didn't play, right? And they sat right. out, so they at least have some idea of what the system. Exactly is. right, and, uh, and that's uh, Cotton Giles, Sean Williams, Leslie Smith, and Richmond Bill Days, and uh, they'll all play significant roles on this team. Even though practice hasn't started, you probably have an idea of who's going to be playing. But is depth a question mark for you right now? Where you've got your fingers crossing, who's going to step up and be that seventh, eighth, or ninth guy? Well, I, I think the strength of our team will be uh, our depth. We oh, can really? play ten guys. Uh, uh, we will have uh, athletic players. Uh, we'll have bigger guards. Uh, the void will be left by Papadia, who is our leading scorer, rebounder, and shot blocker. Probably this is shot blocking as much as anything. Uh, the other areas that hopefully we can we can do by committee, the scoring and the rebound. I, I look at the 15 and 7 at home last year. That's tied an SMU record for home wins. Are the SMU fans is it starting to catch on now that we've got a product here that you can come and see? You know, I think so. I think that uh, uh, SMU has a proud history in, in, in all sports and yeah. basketball. Uh, there's no exception. They've, they've won a lot. And so those former players, um, you know, like to win. And, and uh, SMU likes to win. So uh, I think that they're excited about what they're seeing. Um, we have our preseason banquet coming up here. And, and uh, um, you know, that's pretty much sold out. Uh, ticket sales are up. Uh, we've increased our schedule, improved our schedule, strength of schedule. So uh, I think people are excited not just about SMU basketball. People are about excited about SMU in general because of the success that uh, June Jones has brought to the football program and, and the leadership of Dr. Turner and, and Steve Orsini. Have some questions? Yeah, uh, Coach, without uh, Papa this year, is Robert Nakundu ready to step into that role as a team leader, or is the depth something that takes over a little bit? Well, I think Robert was, is the leader of the team. I think he'll, he'll get assists from Cotton Giles, um, Rodney Klinkscales, uh, maybe from Sean Williams and Jeremiah Samaripas. Uh, but uh, when I look to a leader, if I had to go one person right now, it's Robert Nakunde. And then what has Jeremiah had to focus on, you think, from freshman to sophomore year to be better this year? Jeremiah, I wanted him to tighten up his shot a little bit. Um, uh, he, he got a little loose with his shot, um, and I wanted him to make better decisions. Jeremiah uh, is a very gifted young player. He can get a little bored part of the game. So take better care of the basketball, run the team, uh, and make, make better decisions. With that said, he still had a two uh, to one assist to turnover ratio, but I'd like to see it maybe be three to one. Coach, you've got a couple of home games that are not going to be on your campus this fall. Um, how do you quantify the benefits that your program will get from those two games? Well, we uh, are the only Division One team in Dallas. So we thought it'd be a good idea to go out into the community. Uh, when uh, the doubleheader is being formed um, in the AAC uh, with Baylor and Mississippi State and uh, Oklahoma State, um, I felt personally, uh, took it personally, that we needed to be involved in that. Uh, to have that in our backyard and we not be a part of it, um, I, I took personally. So. Uh, we went uh, uh, full steam ahead, got involved in that, so we'll be a part of that doubleheader playing Oklahoma State on December 28th in the American Airlines Center, and that'll be on national TV. Uh, then we had another opportunity um, due to a scheduling situation that came up 
to take our team into South Dallas. And we have six players on our roster from Dallas, uh, the most we've had since I've been there. Recruiting in Dallas is, is the, my first and uh, priority. And so we want to then take our team into Dallas and uh, playing at Ellis Davis Fieldhouse where a lot of the high school games are played. Um, and we're going to play Jackson State on, I think it's December 15th or 16th. December 15th. Um, and uh, another cool way to, to just, you know, reach out to the community and say, okay, we're, we're Dallas's team. We want to, you know, you come support us, but we need to come support you too. Uh, when you look at the transfers you got coming in, a guy like Sean, how do you temper expectations for a guy who hasn't played for a while that is coming in in the middle of the season? Well, Sean Williams, uh, Cotton Giles, Nick Russell, three key transfers that we've got that coming back home to Dallas. Um, Sean was a highly rated prospect out of Duncanville High School, went to Texas. Um, sometimes the thing that you have to do is build up their confidence. Now, that, that'll sound maybe a little uh, uh, opposed to what you're thinking, but you know, when, when they're that highly rated and they go away and maybe don't have the success that they had hoped, Sometimes they come back a little, little battered, so you got to boost them up. Uh, Sean had a rough spring. He, he was a, a transfer at uh, Christmas last year, but he's had a great summer uh, and, a, and a great fall. He's in very good shape. He's shooting the ball with a lot of confidence. Um, he, he knows how to play the game. Uh, he's going to be a good player for us when he's eligible to play uh, in mid-December. Coach, with all the seniors that you lost from last year and all the new faces that you're incorporating this year, do you expect the team to have more of a visual difference on the offensive end or defensive end? This year? I, I think that's a good question. Um, I think the, def the, the, the difference might be uh, more visible on a defensive end because I think we'll play 10 guys, 8 to 10 guys, so we'll be able to pressure the ball a little bit more. Um, I'm hoping we can pick the ball up the court a little bit more. Um, but as I say that, the offensive end, last year we had Papadia as our low post threat. He did handle the ball at the foul line and at the top of the key, but we were going to go to him in the low post at the end of the day. Now we won't have that. It'll be spread out. We may not have a guy averaging 18, 19 points a game uh, and another one averaging 14, but we may have you know, four guys averaging between 12 and 15 points. So offensively, we'll have more interchangeable parts. Um, and we may be posting up our guards more uh, this year because Cotton Giles, 6'4", 6'4 and a half. Uh, Jalen Jones, a 6'7 wing. Uh, Ryan Manuel, 6'4 guard. So um, we'll, we'll look a little different on the offensive and defensive end without losing who we are as a team. Rebounding, though. You're out rebounded by three a game. Yeah, part of that is, is that we don't go to the offensive boards or did not last year. The other thing is we were small at the guards. I think we'll be a better rebounding team in light of the fact that we lose Papa Dia. You said in the past that uh, a lot of the success in the season takes place over the summer, and in-season success can carry over into the summer. When you went to the CIT semifinals last year, did you see a change in the off-season approach from your players? Um, you know, a lot of that's based on leadership. Uh, we can't do a lot with the guys in the summer. We can't do anything. Um, it's just kind of what you hear. Uh, the tough thing for us is Carl Jordan, our strength coach, took the head strength position um, at Alabama State where he oversees everything. And uh, we hired Doug Hicks. Doug started in uh, August. So we lost a couple of months that are critical to have a, your strength and conditioning coach working with your guys. So um, I felt when we got back to school at the end of August, we were a little bit behind. Uh, where I would have liked to have been conditioning-wise and, and maybe even X and O-wise because I would have hoped that the seniors would have taken the young guys, you know, uh, on the court and done some things. But, again, we don't have a whole lot of control over that. I, I certainly hope the NCAA changes that rule going forward. 